Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Hello, 大家下午好 Welcome to the Mandarin English Bilingual Story Time. 欢迎来到这个普通话和英文双语故事时间 So my name is Shamei. 我的名字呢叫做少妹 So I'm the library assistant at the San Carlos Library. 我是圣卡洛斯图书馆的馆员 So San Carlos Library is part of San Mateo County Libraries. 圣卡洛斯图书馆呢是圣马雕县里图书馆十二个分馆之一。So right now we're closed, but we're always open at smcl.org. 现在图书馆关门了，但是呢，我们的网上图书馆呢一直在为您开放。So please visit our website for our online resources and online activities. 请登录我们的网站来了解我们的网上资源和网上活动。All right. If you have any questions, you're welcome to text us. 那如果你有任何的疑问呢，你可以欢迎你们呢给我们啊、uh, 发短信呢。All right. Thank you. 谢谢。All right. So before we start, I'm going to tell you what props I'm going to use today. 那在讲故事以前呢，我会告诉你我会用到什么道具哦。All right. So I'm going to use scarves. 我会用到丝巾。If you don't have scarf, it's okay. You can just bring your clothes, okay? 那如果你没有丝巾呢，没关系，你可以呢拿你的衣服过来。I will also use shakers. 那我当然呢也会用这个摇摇器。All right. And I'm gonna use my friend Teddy. 那我也会用我的小朋友这个泰迪熊来帮我。All right. We're gonna set things aside. And then we're going to sing the, our first song. So you're welcome to grab those stuff when while I sing the first song. All right. 那现在呢，我在唱第一首歌的时候呢，你可以去把这些道具拿过来。All right. So we're going to sing a song called "Good Afternoon Song" because right now it's afternoon. 那么我们第一首歌呢是叫做下午歌、午安歌。Okay. So we're going to do the pattern like this. 我们这样唱歌。Clap your thigh and then clap your hands. High five, that way. High five, show. All right. Ready? One, two, three. Awesome. Good afternoon, everybody. How are you? Clap, clap. Good afternoon, everybody. How are you? Clap, clap. We are glad you're here today on this special day. Good afternoon, everybody. How are you? Clap, clap. Now let's try in Mandarin. We call Wu An Ge. Okay. 准备好了吗？午安，大家好，午安，拍拍手。午安，大家好，午安，拍拍手。很高兴看到你在这特别的一天。午安，大家好，午安，拍拍手。Yes, Len. Good afternoon, everybody. 大家下午好，你们好棒哦。All right. Now, since it's afternoon, should we do some afternoon stretch? 那既然现在是下午时间，那我们要不要做一下下午的伸展运动呢 ？All right, let's do it together. 我们一块来做。So we are going to sing the song. It's called Tick Tock Clock. So 这首歌叫做步步钟。All right. So you're going to do some counting and also do some dropping. Right. 然后呢，你会做数数，然后呢，还会跳一跳。OK， 我定。OK， 我看 one three， 一、二、三 ，tick tock tick tock。I'm a little cuckoo clock。tick tock tick tock。Now it's almost one o'clock。So you jump one two three， 呼呼 ，jump one time， yeah， excellent。OK， should we do two clock？ OK， let's do it together。Tick tock, tick tock. I'm a little cuckoo clock. Tick tock, tick tock. Now it's almost two o'clock. Let's jump two times. Cuckoo, cuckoo. Okay, excellent. Should we do three o'clock? All right, let's do it together. Okay. Tick tock, tick tock. I'm a little cuckoo clock. Tick tock, tick tock. Now it's almost three o'clock. Let's jump three times. Cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo! All right, excellent. All right, 
way. Okay, so this song is called Bu Bu Zhong in Mandarin. All right, so let's sing in Mandarin. All right, 准备好了吗？我们唱中文喽。嗯嗯。Okay, 一二三，滴答滴答，我是一个步步钟。滴答滴答，现在报时一点钟，我们跳一次喽。Go go! Okay, 好棒。那我们现在呢，要不要唱两点钟呢？要不要？要，对不对 ？OK， 来唱两点钟哦。滴答滴答，我是一个步步钟。滴答滴答，现在报时两点钟。OK， 我们跳两遍喽。Go go! Go go! OK， 好棒。那我们谢谢，要不要唱三点钟呢？要不要呀、yeah? ？OK， good。OK， 我们唱三点钟喽。滴答滴答，我是一个步步钟。滴答滴答，现在报时三点钟。OK， 好，转转 three time， 跳三次了，四喽。Go go 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 go。OK， 好棒。Teddy said excellent， 好棒，你们好棒。All right， so I'm gonna put the Teddy away. Good exercise, right? We do strength training. Good, good. Okay. So coming up, so we are going to do some cooking. How about that? That 跟下接着下来呢，我们要做些东西，煮东西吃，好不好 ？Okay. Do you have any idea? 你们有什什么要煮的呢？啊 ，Let me think about it. 嗯，让我先想一想。Okay. So before we have make some popcorn, we make some dumpling. And we also bake some cake, right? 那以前呢，我们有去做鲍玉米花，没有去包饺子，没有去烤蛋糕。嗯 ，OK. I think today I want to make some popcorn and also put some dumpling. How about that? 那今天我想呢，我是想要做鲍玉米花，还有呢，包饺子。Are you guys ready? 准备好了吗 ？OK. Bring your shaker. 把你的摇摇器拿出来。Ready? 准备好了 ，Popcorn kernel, popcorn kernel, stir in the pop, stir in the pop, shake them up, shake them up until they pop. All right, excellent, 好棒哦。这个就是叫做鲍玉米花的歌。Should we sing it one more time? 再唱一遍。OK, ready? Popcorn kernel, popcorn kernel, stir in the pop. Stir in the pot. Shake them up, shake them up until they pop. All right, those are my paper popcorn. One more time, until they pop. Okay, 好棒哦 Okay, excellent. So now we're done of making the popcorn, right? 那我们现在已经做完鲍玉米花了 Should we make some dumpling 呢？那我们要不要做些包饺子呢 ？Yeah, okay. So you're going to Chop the radish, and then you're going to put everything inside, right? And then you fold it, and then you make a dumpling. Okay, ready? Okay, so pan fry the radish and chop it. Okay, ready? Chop lobo, chop lobo, chie chie chie. Bao jiao zi, bao jiao zi, nie nie nie. 好孩子，好孩子，顶呱呱。呱呱呱呱呱呱呱呱呱 ！OK， 有听歌有声 ，Right？OK，、okay. Should we sing one more time？ 再来一遍哦 ，OK。One two three， 炒萝卜，炒萝卜，切切切，包饺子，包饺子，捏捏捏，好孩子，好孩子，顶呱呱，呱呱呱呱呱呱呱呱呱 ！All right，Excellent， 好棒 ，OK。Now， do you want to enjoy some popcorn？ And some dumpling. 那你现在是要吃鲍玉米花和饺子吗 ？Okay, let's try them. 嗯，试吃一下。嗯，好好吃，肉 so yummy， 好好吃。All right. Okay, excellent. So I think it's time to read the book. 我们我觉得现在已经是时候读一本故事书了。All right. So I'm going to share the book with you. All right. 那我现在会跟你分享我的书。All right. Give me one second. 请等一下。All right, so 
the book is here, as you can see. 那你看到了，书呢就在这里。Okay, so this book is about family. 这本书讲的呢就是家人。They talk about the love between the siblings. 那这本书讲的呢就是那个兄弟姐妹之间的爱。Okay, let's see what happened in the book. 我们看看呢这本书讲的是什么。So I took this book out from Libby. All right, 我是从 Libby 那里借的这本书。This book is called Chloe in Stat by Mike Player, illustrated by Mike Player. 那这本书的名字叫做《可洛伊来了》。作者呢，跟绘画师都是 Mike Player. Chloe in Stat, 可洛伊来了。Okay, so this book is published by Chronicle Books. 那这个书的出版社呢是 Chronicle Books. All right. Oh, look at the page. This is my house. 这个呢就是我的家 At least it used to be. 至少呢，它曾经是我的家。Now it's our house. 但是现在呢，是我们的家。Do you see my little sister here? Beep 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 beep. Boom boom boom. 你看到我的小妹妹在这里吗？哦，她在弹钢琴。啊 ，I was hoping for a little sister who was just like me. 我曾经呢，希望我有一个小妹妹，然后我的小妹妹呢，跟我长得一模一样。So we can play piano together. 然后呢，我们就可以一块弹钢琴。This is my sister. 这个就是我的妹妹。But I got Chloe instead. 但是我的妹妹来了，她的名字叫做。Chloe, she's nothing like me. I color with crayon. 然后呢，我的妹妹跟我一点也不像。那我呢是用蜡笔来涂颜色。嗯嗯，喵喵喵。Chloe think they are delicious. 喵喵喵。但是我的妹妹呢，克洛伊，她觉得蜡笔好好吃哦，她就把它吃掉了。喵喵喵喵喵。I love books. 我很爱看书。你看呢，这是我的书。So does Chloe. 那克洛伊呢，她也很爱书。You see what she's doing now? She opened the book like this. 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 All right, next page. Actually, Chloe can't seem to get enough of anything. 事实上呢，克洛伊好像她干什么事情都停不下来。Okay, now I'm gonna give you a little test now. Okay, 我要考考你哦。What is Chloe doing in this picture? 克洛伊在这个图片里面干嘛呢 ？She's playing with the bubbles. Oh, 原来呢，这个图片里他在跟那个泡泡在玩。What is Chloe doing in this picture? 克洛伊在这个图片里面干嘛呢？就 doing like this. She is. 她干嘛呢？她在干嘛 ？Throwing up my clothes. 她好像把衣服扔掉，对不对？扔出来。What is Chloe doing in this picture? 克洛伊在这个图片里干嘛呢？ 
just like this. Oh, just praying with what? Toilet papers, right? Oh, what is Chloe doing in this picture? She's like this. Mm, more. Mm, more. What is she doing? She is eating a lot of cookies. Especially my things. Right, text time. Text time again. Okay, let's look at the picture together. What is Chloe, Chloe doing in this picture? Chloe, in this picture, you're doing what? She's doing like this. Oh, she is pushing down my blocks. Then she's doing what? She's pushing down my blocks. All right, let's look at this picture. What is Chloe doing with the dog? 他对我的那个洋娃娃干嘛呢？他蹲了地，这干嘛？ She's whipping the hair off my dog. Oh no! 然后呢，克洛伊呢，她把我那个洋娃娃的头发这样子撕啊撕啊撕撕下来了。Oh oh! Oh no! How strong it is. She is. 看看那个克洛伊有多强壮。She is lifting what? Up my keyboard piano. Oh my goodness! 然后呢，克洛伊呢，她好强壮哦，她把我的那个什么键盘钢琴这样举起来，哦天呀！And oh, then I walk away。然后呢，我就是把我的钢琴拿过来，然后我就走了。Hi，克洛伊，我走了，克洛伊，克洛伊。Go away, Chloe. I need to practice. 然后呢，我在弹钢琴的时候呢，妹妹克洛伊又过来了。克洛伊走开走开，我需要练习。噗噗噗噗噗，她不听，她在按我的键盘。克洛伊，然后呢，我很生气了，我就大叫说：“克
我没有一个小妹妹跟我长得一模一样，跟我做的事情一模一样。Because I got Chloe. 因为呢，我现在有有一个叫做克洛伊的妹妹。Oh, she's going down the bed. 她现在呢爬下床了。Oh, she wants to sleep with me together. 她现在跟我想跟我一块睡。So I got Chloe instead. 我现在有一个很不一样的妹妹，她的名字叫做克洛伊。All right, all right. The end. 讲完了。Okay. Oh, thank you for listening to the story. Ah, now, thank you for listening to the story. So last week we talked about friends, and then this week we will talk about family, right? 上个礼拜呢，我们讲的是有关朋友。那这个礼拜我们讲的是家人。So do you know what holiday is coming at this Sunday? On this Sunday, 你知道这个周日是什么节日吗 ？It is 是什么节日呢 ？You know that? It is Mother's Day, 是母亲节，对不对 ？All right, are you going to celebrate Mother's Day? 你会庆祝母亲节吗 ？Are you going to draw something or make a card or do something to give to your mom or maybe your grandma or your aunties? 那你会不会在家里面做一些东西，然后送给妈妈，或者是奶奶、婆婆，或者是阿姨、姑姑呢 ？All right, you want to see what I got for my for Mother's Day? 你要不要看我得到什么呢？我收到什么礼物呢 ？All right, I'm gonna show it to you. So actually, you see, Happy Mother's Day, 母亲节快乐。So this is the drawing I got from my daughter. 这个呢是我的女儿送给我的礼物哦。Okay, thank you. 谢谢 ，Thank you, my daughter. 谢谢我的女儿。All right. So do you want to do something for your mommy? All right. 你要不要做些东西给妈妈呢？ You know what I make for my mom? 你要不要想知道我给我给我给我妈妈做了什么 ？Actually, I make a flower necklace for my mom. 就是呢，我在家做了一个纸花做的项链 ，like this， 给我的妈妈。All right. So if you want to, you can make one at home too. All right. 那如果你想要做的话呢，你可以在家也做一个 flower necklace. All right. So we wish all the moms, um. Grandma, 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 and aunties, happy Mother's Day! All right. 那我们庆祝所有的妈妈们，还有什么婆婆们、外公啊、外婆和奶奶们，还有阿姨们，还有什么啊，姑姑们，母亲节快乐 ！All right, thank you. All right, so I think it's time to sing more songs. 我们现在呢要唱更多的歌，好不好 ？So remember one time we sing the one uh high and sick song. It's called 一二三四五六七，我的朋友在哪里？在这里，在这里，我的朋友在这里，对不对 ？So last time we sing this song, and then how about we change the friend 朋友 friend into mom 妈妈 ，and then we sing daddy 爸爸。And then brother, 哥哥 older brother, older sister, and then 姐姐 how about that? So we praise the world, okay? So we count one to seven, and then say, "Where's my friend?" And then you say, "Where's my daddy?" And then here's my daddy, here's my daddy, okay? All right. So let's. It's only in Mandarin, ready? So we start with friend, okay? 一二三四五六七。我的朋友在哪里？在这里，在这里。我的朋友在这里。好棒 ！OK， now we're gonna sing. What did you sing? Mommy, Mama. OK, what did? 一二三四五六七。我的妈妈在哪里？在这里。在这里，我的妈妈在这里。Now we sing, 爸爸 ，Daddy, ready? Ready? 一二三四五六七，我的爸爸在哪里？在这里，在这里，我的爸爸
在这里。OK， older brother， 哥哥，快点！一二三四五六七，我的哥哥在哪里？在这里，在这里，我的哥哥在这里。One last thing， a、uh, person we sing， older sister， 姐姐。一二三四五六七，我的姐姐在哪里？在这里，在这里，我的姐姐在这里。Yeah, excellent. So we will learn some more family title in the future. 那我们今后呢会学习更多的家庭称呼 ，right? Like. Grandpa, we say 爷爷 or we say 外公 Okay, we learn them in the future. 我们将来会学到 Alright. So how about we sing the song called Whoa, Whoa, Whoa? You're about to stretch our body more. Is that okay? 我们现在唱那个摇摇摇小船的歌，做的是伸展运动 Alright. So we're going to use the scarf here like this. Alright. Get your scarf ready. Or get your clothes ready. Alright. 我们把丝巾或者是衣服拿过来。Okay, but here we count one, two, three. 一二三 Whoa, whoa, whoa! Your bow gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Can you roll yourself backward this time? 我们这次呢要向后摇船啊 Ready? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Your bow gently down the stream. If you see an alligator, don't forget to scream. You say, "Oh, alligator!" Okay, excellent. All right, so we're gonna sing the Mandarin version. So, whoa, we call it Yao. Little boat, we call it Xiao Chuan. Okay, 准备好了吗 ？Okay, 一二三，摇摇摇，小船，努力向前摇。Now we're going to go back to the front. Are you ready? Yow, 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 so we are gonna sing the goodbye song. It's called Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. 那我们唱的那个歌歌叫做小星星。So ready? 小星星。So show me your little hands. 把手伸出来。Ready? 一二三。Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, how I wonder what you are. Up. Above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. So we have the Mandarin version. So little we call it 小，星星 it means a star. All right. So put them together. 小星星。准备好了吗？一闪一闪亮晶晶，满天都是小星星，挂在天空放光明，好像许多小眼睛。一闪一闪亮晶晶，满天都是。小星星 ，Yeah, excellent, 好棒 ！All right, so that's the end of the story time. Thank you for joining me today. 那故事到这里就结束喽。谢谢你们的参与。So at three thirty, my coworker Kelly is gonna do the create program. Hope you hope to see you there. 那在三点半的时候呢，我的同事 Kelly 呢会做那个创意的活动，期望你的参与哦。All right, so I will see you next time. Hi, 那下回见喽，再见。
All right. Thank you, Chalamet. That was awesome. I always enjoy hearing those stories and songs in English and Mandarin. Well done. All right, well, welcome back, everyone. This is Create with Kelly. I'm here with another activity for you all this week. Um, again, this is a program offered virtually by the San Mateo County Libraries, and I am one of the librarians working for San Mateo County. You might recognize me from the EPA Library. But let's go ahead and get into our presentation for today. And I always like to remind everyone out there um, that our, although our libraries remain closed, we are available uh, via text message. Um, you can send us a text message with your library questions to the phone number 650-851-0147. We have staff available Monday through Sunday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. They can help answer your questions about how to access library resources. Maybe you need some uh, help getting your account uh, password. Or if you don't have a library card, that's a great way to uh, reach out and get some help with that as well. So. Text us if you need to. And for today, Create with Kelly, we are going to be designing and building like architects do. Um, so we'll be doing a blueprint drawing and then we'll be talking about how you can create a 3D model using whatever you have at home, pretty much, uh, so you can make a model of your building. And also, I uh, want to highlight that we are continuing our celebration of uh, Asian and Pacific Islander American Heritage Month. Hopefully I got that right. <laughs> uh, but this month, uh, in the month of May, we'll be celebrating uh, many cultures and traditions. Uh, and in this program in particular, we'll be highlighting artists um, and makers and other traditions that come from these cultures um, that tie into the activities that we're doing, such as today. Uh, now, I am not an architect, um, though I do have some family connections. My brother is an architect, um, but I do wanna also, you know, recognize that architects work really hard to become architects, to study. Um, so I just wanna acknowledge that though I am not an architect, um, we're kind of, you know, exploring that field today um, through these activities. Um, and the photo on the screen there is from a similar workshop I did uh, back in September of 2019 at the East Palo Alto Library. Um, so we've already been doing some architecting over there and maybe you have to. As I mentioned, we're celebrating uh, Asian and Pacific Islander American Heritage Month. So I wanted to highlight, um, I did a little research actually to uh, you know, find out in the world of architecture who, who, who can we celebrate? Who can we recognize? Um, of course, I'm sure there are many more uh, architects and designers out there, but one that uh, has certainly contributed um, quite a lot, um, at least in terms of the number of buildings that this architect, I.M. Pei is their name, um, passed away um, not too long ago, actually, last year, lived to be over 100 years old. Pretty amazing. Um, but definitely uh, did a lot of uh, designing, some really interesting, um, pretty out there buildings. Um, there's a few examples illustrated on the page here. Um, but let's take a look at some of the pictures of the actual buildings, Just a few examples here. Uh, of course, we are a library system. So uh, this is an example of a presidential library, the John F. Kennedy Library that I am pay uh, was part of designing this building. Um, definitely looks different than the East Palo Alto Library. And uh, certainly, <laughs> uh, I don't think any of our branches in San Mateo County look quite like this one. Uh, but pretty cool design there. Another example, this one's in Cleveland, Ohio. I'm from Ohio, so woohoo. Although I've never actually visited, uh, this is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So it's this museum that's dedicated to rock and roll. Um, I hear it's really awesome, actually, really cool to visit, uh, though not right now. Uh, but look at that building. Oh my gosh, that is definitely a little different than uh, anything I've seen around here recently. <laughs> And I'm kind of curious, like in my mind right now, how could I build that out of cardboard or some of the materials I have at home? 
Uh, in addition, I uh, was found to doing some research, right, trying to find uh, some good examples to share with you all. Um, and I encountered Helen Lu Fong, um, who's no longer with us on Earth Living, but she contributed. She certainly left her mark, um, especially for the time period in which she was working. Uh, it was very, uh, not super common for women um, to be participating in the field of architecture, um, but she was a licensed architect, did a lot of interior design work. So that's like, you know, really figuring out what the inside of that building is gonna look like. Um, and she uh, contributed greatly to what's known as the Googie style of mid-century architecture. Um, and there's a lot of examples in Los Angeles of this style of architecture. Um, and so she was very influential in sort of, you know, bringing that style to life, uh, googie as it's called. Um, there's a photo of Helen, of course, and then a photo as well of the interior of uh, the Holiday Bowl, um, which I think was like a kind of cafe restaurant in LA. Um, here's another example of um, sort of the exterior of one of the buildings um, that she contributed to. Um, so that's that googie architecture style there. Definitely, if you're interested in any of these architects or the style, you can continue to do your own research at home. Um, taking a look at the inside there, I love this. I think that is just so cool. I want to go there. I want to eat, hang out with people again. <laughs> um, but, you know, that's Helen's work right there. Look at those uh, benches that she, um, you know, envisioned, the colors for the space. Um, and I had read a little bit as well that she worked with a lot of uh, local craftspeople and uh, uh, artisans to uh, help, uh, you know, make some of these features in the, the spaces as well. So go Helen. Uh, there's somebody new that I didn't know about. And then I also, in my research, encountered um, a very contemporary example, um, Rosa T. Shang. Um, you can read her credentials there. She is an architect. Um, I learned that she actually helped to design um, some, of, some of the Apple stores. Um, she was heavily involved in that. Um, but what I really love and what I really love that I learned about Rosa is that she is a leader in, you know, increasing equity and inclusion in the field and profession of architecture. Um, unfortunately, like a lot of professions, um, women and people of color are not as equally represented in these fields and she has been um, for some time now, you know, really leading the conversation, um, you know, asking questions, you know, like, why is it that 50% of architecture students are female, yet in our profession, the numbers are so much lower. So um, important work that she's doing to make this a much more e uh, equitable and accessible field for all of you out there. Out there. Um, and I found that to be really inspiring. And currently she is working for a design uh, architecture firm in San Francisco. So an additional uh, local connection there. So there we have another awesome example of somebody who's making a difference, making changes. But coming back to ourselves a little bit now, um, back to our activity, the making that we'll be doing today. First thing we gotta think of is like, what are, what are you gonna build? What kind of structure or building are you going to create? Um, and I think it's helpful as well um, in researching for this program. I found some really cool resources. I hope to share those with you soon um, on our website because um, there's some really great resources there about this exact type of activity. Um, so questions to ask when we're designing a building or envisioning a building, you know, who does this space help? You know, what's the purpose of the space? Is it a library? Well, libraries help lots of people, right? Um, or maybe it's a restaurant, maybe it's a school, maybe it's a house, maybe it's a big, a big uh, apartment complex, you know? Could be so many different things, but we wanna think like, well, what's the purpose of this building? Who's it helping? Um, you also wanna think, what could the building be used for? Um, again, like libraries are for uh, gathering with people, meeting, learning, certainly, accessing materials like books. Um, if it's a school, well, I'm gonna do a lot of school there. <laughs> um, when could this building be used? Is it open all the time? Is it only open at certain times? Is it gonna be something we need now? Or is it something that we might need in the future? And where do we need it? Uh, all excellent questions that can help guide you in sort of developing the type of building that you want to make. All right, so in addition, doo -doo -doo, I was looking for, yeah, anyway. <laughs> uh, so 
starting to think about, okay, what kind of building do I want to make? What kind of house? What do I want to include? What kind of features is it going to have? And a good way to, to start getting these um, ideas and answers to these questions that you have on paper is to draw them on paper or, you know, scribble them down somehow, right? Um, so architects create what's called a blueprint. Um, and you might have many versions of your blueprint leading up to a more finalized blueprint. Um, but for our purposes, um, for this activity, a blueprint is a really great way for us to get some of our, our ideas out of our brains and onto paper. Um, so in the picture here, you can see um, on the left-hand side, somebody actually had blue paper and they used uh, white to uh, a white crayon or color pencil to uh, actually make um, that looks like sort of like a house um, with different features. Looks like they've got a chimney, some windows. Uh, in the upper right-hand corner, there's a video, or not a video, a picture. <laughs> of uh, just a, a more simple uh, floor plan. So your, your blueprint could be um, from the inside of your building or it could be from the outside of the building um, or you could have both. And then I've also included on that bottom right hand corner, there's a photo of just some architectural blueprint symbols. I thought that was really cool. Um, if you wanna be super technical in your drawings and have like all the toilets look exactly like that toilet on there, um, or if you just wanna get super detailed, um, you could look into other types of symbols that you could use to make a very detailed drawing. Now I created a blueprint earlier today. Um, and I, this was a lot of fun for me because I wasn't thinking about money. I wasn't thinking about like how realistically possible this building or place would be to, uh, to build. I was just, you know, I was tapping into my imagination and just creating something that I really liked and wanted to make happen hopefully someday um, without feeling restrained or constricted in any way. And so what I came up with um, if you've seen some of my other videos, you know I like plants and gardening. Um, you might also uh, come to, to find that I uh, enjoy art and I love that other people have space to make art. So my design is for a community garden playground art space. Um, you can see here on um, a pretty abstract drawing. It's not very detailed, um, but this is kind of like looking down onto the garden from up above, maybe where a bird or a butterfly, <laughs> like I drew on my uh, blueprint. <clears throat> so you can see I've kind of outlined, a, maybe these are pathways that people can walk on. I've labeled, oh, this is the area that's the garden. Uh, over here down in the bottom, there's gonna be a, a water art section for this. I'm imagining it's an outdoor space. Um, and then we got some more garden. I drew like little plants growing and flowers to represent that. Um, you can see I've got in the kind of right hand side, I've got this playground art space, um, big space, you know, so we can run around and play in. And then in the middle, I put, um, I've labeled it the people's stage, but I thought it would be really awesome if we had a space where, where people could go and present. Maybe they could read their poems or maybe they're playing music. Um, and then surrounding that, I've decided this is gonna be like a giant ramp. So it's very accessible and a giant ramp that goes all the way down along the stage. And there's places that people can uh, stop to sit or there's just a lot of space there, but it's also kind of like this spiral that surrounds the stage. Um, so if you can't tell, I had a lot of fun uh, imagining this space um, and, you know, I'd like to think that it's, it helps the people by providing space for people to grow plants and food and also to express themselves. Um, yeah, so this is my blueprint. Um, I can't wait. I really, well, we got to figure this a way out so we can communicate and you can share your blueprints with me. Um, but I hope you, uh, you know, you have some fun with this. Uh, this stage of the, uh, the, the process and you can go through many, many, many drawings. You don't have to, uh, you know, have it all come out perfect the first time. Um, you'll probably have more and more ideas the more, the more that you try and the more drawing and doodling that you do. Okay, so once you have a blueprint, uh, you're going to want to start thinking about how to create a model of this design. Now, I included a photo in my slides here of actual architects or people who are designers or who knows their exact titles, right? But they work for an actual architecture design firm. And there is a photo of them 
doing what we're all about to do, which is building a model of a building or structure, whatever the type of project they're working on, right? Um, so this is something that architects actually do. And my brother, who is an architect, I can tell you that I've seen at least a few of his models, um, especially when he was in college, uh, developing them. There was quite a few models coming back home with him uh, when he came home from college. <laughs> So let's take a look. What kinds of materials can you use for your model? Um, there's a lot of great examples on the screen here. Pretty much any type of packaging from food that you buy at the grocery store, um, such as cereal boxes, pasta boxes, crackers, um, cartons such as like juice, juice cartons, milk cartons, um, shoe boxes, and any kind of box, cardboard. Uh, so many great, 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 great materials that um, are actually designed by designers and, uh, you know, created with intention so that you can hopefully uh, either recycle them or put them to reuse. Um, other things that might work well, toilet paper tubes, paper cups, paper bags. Um, if you get takeout food, takeout trays, um, any type of packaging materials, you could find some materials from nature, such as sticks and leaves, pebbles, rocks, acorns. Um, and then if you want to uh, make this um, sort of more permanent structure, you might, you'll probably want to use some glue. Um, and maybe some tape, uh, but it's worth mentioning um, the sort of the scale of this. Now you could make um, really small, uh, use really small materials, or you could use like huge boxes and create like as if they were giant blocks, uh, you know, create things like that. So this is really a, an adaptable activity. It's very flexible. So depending on how old you are, or, you know, where you're at in terms of what kinds of things you like to do and make, um, you could be super, super detailed, or you could be a little more abstract and create, you know, just build stuff out of cardboard boxes for that matter. Um, so it is worth mentioning that there's so many possibilities with it and a lot of great learning that goes along with that. Lots of materials you can use. Um, so here's a few examples. Uh, I mentioned we did a workshop uh, similar to what I'm presenting now um, back in uh, September 2019 at the East Palo Alto Library. We miss you. Um, here are some examples of things that people constructed uh, on the left-hand side there. Um, I believe this is some kind of finish to, I don't know if it's a game or, We'll have to ask the architect, but they did a really awesome job constructing that out of uh, popsicle sticks and some fabric. And that actually kind of reminds me of Sporky back there. Uh, <laughs> on the right hand side, there's a looks like a picture of a bridge that someone constructed. That is really awesome. Bridges are a lot of fun to make. Another example here. This, I believe, is a house um, using, uh, you can actually see the cardboard. They used uh, toilet paper tubes and they cut them really fine there so that they could stick them flat down on that other piece of cardboard. Looks like they uh, doodled on there some uh, architectural features as well. A few more examples. Um, again, on the left hand side, it looks like that one, I believe, was a house with googly eyes. Watch out. Um, on the right hand side, I like this example because this person, they're kind of channeling that Helen, Helen Liu Fang uh, interior design uh, architecture work. Um, and so they really created like pieces of furniture, which that can be so much fun. So again, you can, you know, focus on the exterior of your building. You can focus on the inside. It's really up to you and what you are interested in. So um, there's no rules here. We're just having fun exploring what we can create, right? Safely, of course, as safe as possible. And then if you want to continue to do some more research, um, there are all kinds of resources about how to use cardboard and cut it and manipulate it in different ways. So you could create like all kinds of really detailed um, structures out of cardboard. Um, so you can try researching some of that or anything that you saw in the presentation today um, that sparked your interest. I encourage you to keep learning and find out more. All right, that was it for my slides. So going to switch my camera and let's let's start making an architectural model <laughs> all right so I've got my blueprint here and probably can't see it too too detailed anyway 
This is my community garden playground art space. And one note about your blueprint, it's a great guide. And although architects would use this to very uh, truthfully build their, their buildings, uh, for our purposes, this for me is more of just a guide. I, I'm not too concerned if it ends up looking exactly like that, but it's there to kind of guide me, like I mentioned. All right, so I am using just a piece of cardboard that's pretty big. Uh, it's going to be the base for my design today. I don't think I'm going to glue anything down too much um, because I'm more interested in just trying to play around and, and see what I can create. Um, now, earlier today, I was uh, starting to cut up some materials. Uh, this was about a two liter uh, plastic bottle. Um, and if you remember, I had created a water art feature in my design. And I thought these would be at least maybe some of them really cool to create, maybe represent those water fountain-y aspects of my design. So already I've started to create my design in 3D with these bottles. One note about working with a uh, type of plastic, if you cut it, um, can be a little tricky to get that started. So if you need to ask for help, ask for help. Um, you also want to be careful, especially with these um, slightly thicker plastics, because when you cut them, they can be a little sharp. So just be careful. Um, they are safe to work with, but you just have to be mindful of the sharp edges. Now, I thought I might use actually this middle piece of the, the uh, bottle to create that stage in the center of my design. Um, and maybe it's actually represent some of the some of the spiral stair viewing area I mentioned. So I'm going to cut the plastic into some strips. I kind of see it already is starting to spiral. My idea was to cut maybe a few more. See, I'll cut this one more time. Yes, there we go. So I'm starting to create this sort of flared effect. Hmm. I want them to stay and maybe be different sizes. So I'm going to use some tape. If you have tape, tape is definitely an excellent quick way uh, to get things to stay put, hold a shape. Let's see, I'll make this one a little narrower. <laughs> and you might feel as you're making these things like, does this make any sense? Does this actually, <laughs> does anyone else know that this looks like to me what it looks like to me? <laughs> or <laughs> does anyone get what I'm, what I'm trying to communicate here? At least that's, that's sometimes how I feel. Uh, but it's really about connecting with, you know, your ideas and your creativity. And if it takes other people a minute to see it, or maybe you explaining a little bit, oh, you know, that's okay because that's a conversation we can have. And certainly your ideas are great. If you think they're great, I say they're great. <laughs> All right, so I've got kind of like my stage going on. I've got my water fountain. Now I wanted to uh, definitely sense my community garden, right? That's part of my theme. I was trying to think of like, how could I represent plants in my, in my model here? Um, and I actually found a birthday card. I was doing a little cleaning. I found this birthday card um, that has plants on it. So I've, you know, birthday cards actually come on this really nice paper. And so I started cutting some of them out so that I could just sit them up and probably would want to either glue it down or tape it down. There I've got some little cactuses and all I did, I'll grab another example here. Ooh, this one's pretty. Plant in a big planter, so I'm cutting around this shape. An easy way to get anything to stand up is to kind of like a, I don't know, our pop-up looks like this, maybe. <laughs> um, is to create a simple little fold. Here I am, if you saw the bookmaking tutorial, 
using my card here to just make that fold stick a little better. And there with that fold, <laughs> it'll stand, it'll stand up. <laughs> um, let me show a few other techniques. Um, so my garden's starting to develop here. Um, and again, like I could intentionally just not glue anything down, make it flexible so that I could continue to, you know, sort of play with the design um, or, you know, make different types of designs over and over. Um, we saw this technique using the paper towel or toilet paper tube in, um, in one of the examples in the slides where they cut up into the roll the same distance all the way around. She had done a lot of little tiny ones, it looked like. I don't know if the size matters so much. I don't know, you'll have to experiment. But you'll notice, in addition to like creating, I love uh, this fringe technique of cutting paper. I actually have <laughs> a little detour here. Uh, my pinata cup that I was continuing this past Saturday, I never really finished it, but I actually might use it as part of my architectural model. And that was, you know, cutting this paper just like that. The other thing you can do is now, since we've cut into that, it allows this uh, tube to really, uh, for you to tape that down then. Um, certainly you can just stick a tube like that and it stands up, but if you wanted to really hold it down, it's a little tricky to get the tape here, but if you have tape going, Let's see, what could this be in my design? Oh, playground. These are my playground features. <laughs> now, certainly my design has a lot of different elements going on. So if you were just looking at this, it, it probably would not make a ton of sense um, versus like if you were building a little house or something, um, it's really up to you how how, uh, how realistic you want things to look. Uh, I tend to be a little more abstract in the way I create things. <laughs> and there's another, another plan. Okay, we've got just a few minutes. Let me show you just a few more, two more cardboard techniques. Ooh, and this is looking like a slide already. Um, so there's a great easy way to uh, connect pieces of cardboard by simply cutting into them. Um, this one I've actually cut to about the width of the cardboard there. So it sits right in there. Um, and then I could, I don't know, maybe, maybe that's the slide going down into the garden, into the, the music pit. Um, and I had a few other examples of that. Let's see. Oh yeah. Like you can actually make just a whole set of blocks of these and just continually. So I've cut into both of these. And I mean, that's a really cool way to build. I mean, actually when I was making this the other day, I thought it looked like, like a bus stop where like there's a little more room to spread out. And like, if you need a little privacy, you could go over there. <laughs> A lot of creativity here, and especially in, in how we interpret, you know, what, what things represent. So it's really good um, for developing creativity and language, artistic expression. Uh, one last technique here, my uh, community garden playground art space is looking pretty cool, actually. I think I still have a little work to do. Last one here, um, to get some cardboard to stand up, I very simply cut a triangle and kind of line it up with the bottom of my uh, piece that I want to stand up. This was actually going to be a minion at one point. Maybe it will be a minion. But I taped, taped that triangle onto there and now it serves to support my minion mountain uh, what part of my garden could this be? Uh, maybe, maybe the entrance. There's a big, 
big arch. I'll have to draw like a, a gateway. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all. I unfortunately don't have any more time for to share with you today, but it's been really wonderful. <laughs> Um, thank you again for joining us. Um, I do hope to post a, a link with some resources soon um, for architecture activities that you can do at home. Um, thank you once again for joining me with, for Create with Kelly. Um, this video and all of our past videos will be, uh, there'll be links on our blog posts so you can go back and watch um, this video and others. And I hope you learned something new. I hope you're uh, curious. And I hope you all stay well and have a great rest of your afternoon and stick around for the next uh, program. All right. Bye, everybody. All right, let's hop on in. Hello, everyone. Thank you. That was very fun watching Kelly make all that. That's really cool. <laughs> all right, but um, if you just came off of Kelly's program, please feel free to stick around. Otherwise, if you're just joining us, welcome. My name is Lynn. I work for the San Mateo County Library System. Welcome to another round of afternoon doodling. And I am joined by... Hi, everybody. My name is Debbie. I also work for the San Mateo County Libraries, and I can't wait to see what you're going to be drawing today, Lynn. What are we going to be doing? Yeah, I'm excited for this one. So let me go ahead and set up my iPad to share my screen. Three, two, one. Here we go. All right, so last week, if you are able to join us or if you found the video later down the line, we talked a bit about uh, starting with facial proportions and touched very briefly at the end on um, starting to do some basic expression work. So this week and also next week, I decided to be very self-indulgent <laughs> because what you are looking at right now are two characters of my own. I created them for stories that I like to write and work on in my free time just as a fun side project. And I thought I would use them as a basis to start doing a little more like real time work on how I would draw expressions with them because they're too, you can, I think you can tell they're both done by the same person on some level, but they're pretty different styles deliberately as characters. So I thought it'd be fun to sort of compare and contrast how you'd have two characters with two different set personalities and two different art styles making, like expressing the same emotion. So Debbie is going to give me prompts for that, which I'm excited for. And so there's kind of two options in how we can approach this Debbie. Either you can give me a prompt and I draw it with both the characters and we compare and contrast right then and there. Or if one seems more fun to you than the other, we can pick just them for this week. And then we do the other one next week with the same prompt list. Do you have a hmm. preference? Mm, let's, maybe we can do one character. Okay. Uh, do you want to know anything about them or do you want to just go by the drawing? Uh, I'm curious about these characters. I don't, I'm not familiar with them. So, um, <laughs> I don't think anyone is. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, let's yeah, start so. with one of them. Introduce me to, to, yeah. All right. So our first character is, um, a kid named Jenna. She outwardly appears to be very, very cool and like is someone who isn't very easily impressed but she's the sort of personality where once you get her invested in something, it takes a while, but then she is fully committed to it, regardless of whether it's a good idea or not. <laughs> so she's the kind of person who would like, once you coax her into playing like say a bad video game, she's going to see it through to the end. Yeah. She has invested time in this now. It is important. <laughs> she's gonna help, okay, cool. And Sam in my head is 
a little bit like a reluctant Shakespeare villain. Oh, okay. He's in what is basically a rom-com. And he's pretty deliberately playing the character that is there to try and prevent the romance, which ends up making it happen anyway. Hmm. He doesn't really like his role, but he feels like someone needs to play it, and he's the one who's taken it on. Okay. And he's very good at it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to vote for Jenna. All right. For this week. Yes, no relation to the Jenna that we saw <laughs> on our show last week. That's true. Yeah. I made this character when I was in, like, college, yeah. so. <laughs> All right, so what's going to be the first prompt? Oh, okay. Uh, the first prompt I have is exhausted. Ooh, okay. What would you do for exhausted? And are you going to be working on just facial expressions or are you going to do like body expressions? I'm probably going to try and include a little bit of body language because part of how I approach the two stories differently is in sort of having a different art style. So Jenna was um, specifically designed to be a little more like Western in my first pass of her. So there's a lot more like exaggerated body language. Mm -hmm. It's meant to be a lot like looser and simpler. <laughs> okay. Over the years, it's sort of like merged back in with my original styles of how I tend to detail things, but that was the intention behind it. So I see you're using like slumped shoulders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just a body that is not cooperating anymore. <laughs> the head is down. <laughs> Lots of eye bags. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh yeah, eye bags are good. But yeah, I picked these two characters because they're both some of my oldest in terms of how long I've been playing with them and also two of my favorites. So oh. they tend to be the easiest for me to very quickly draw and sort of interpret what they would be doing in different scenarios. And are they in the same universe or story? Okay, totally different. Completely different. No relation whatsoever. They don't know of each other's existence. <laughs> no. I'm not sure they'd get along. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they did seem pretty different. Yeah, that's also partially why I chose them. Like, they're very different core personality types. And so theoretically, they would have very different reactions to things. See the yeah dark dark eye circles. That's a good touch. Yeah, Jenna is um, technically in a fantasy story, but part of the idea behind the fantasy story is that she and her friend are kids that just do not respect the awe of the fantasy story that they tend to find themselves stumbling into. Hmm. And so they are in like extraordinary circumstances that they manage to overcome because they're just so perpetually refusing to participate in like the grandiose of it all. <laughs> and yeah, Sam is meanwhile in a family drama disguised as a rom-com. So I'm not going to fully clean up all these drawings just because I want to see how many we can get through in the half mm -hmm. hour. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Very much in the body language. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> not quite anatomically correct because I'm doing this fairly quickly, but that's okay. <laughs> that's fine. Get the idea. Mm hmm
So how long have you been drawing Jenna for? Uh, Jenna, I came up in my freshman year of college because I was kind of struggling a lot with um, artist block. Okay. Like I did not like anything I was drawing. I was getting really tired of what my style looked like. Mm -hmm. And so she was designed in a way that was meant to be very, very deliberately different on how I drew things. And then I ended up getting attached <laughs> to her, to the character that started to develop. Because cool. I just found it. I find her very fun to throw into situations and watch her like slowly get involved, but in like the least recommended way. <laughs> mm -hmm. Make this a little cleaner before we move on. <laughs> yeah, good old Z's. Yes. <laughs> I do wonder how those became like such a universe, like such a common shorthand for right. sleeping. <laughs> look that up. That'd be an interesting rabbit hole to yeah. take a deep dive into. Uh -huh. All right. Very sketchy. Yay. I'm going to say that is someone who exhausted. I may be about to expose myself as not knowing how to spell that. I think okay, you got it. You got it right. <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right. Want to give me the next prompt? Okay. My next one is like completely the opposite, but jittery, very much awake. Maybe caffeine is involved, but high energy, like just awake. All right. I don't know if I'd make caffeine involved for her because she's yeah. like 12. <laughs> okay, so just sugar. <laughs> she just yeah. ate the Ooh. whole, she had a sugar slurpee. rush. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. are big yes <laughs> now one of the things that I always found like one of the things I found very freeing with trying to change up having a style for this like having a different style for her story was that it let me play a lot more with expressions than I had been allowing myself to mm -hmm. up until that point where I would sort of like all throughout high school, my number one thing was I was trying to look like a shoujo anime. <laughs> mm. And eventually I just got to a point where it was at a crossroads of I couldn't really push it in any new direction that I liked. And so, yeah, this was meant to be very much pushing against those boundaries I had sort of set for myself character seems very expressive already so I think like expressions lend very well to mm -hmm. to her I'm not sure if I'm gonna go with that mouth I'll figure that out Yeah, I also mentioned um, briefly in our episode last week when I was drawing a character for Kaja, how I like to use things like hair and clothing as a cheat for movement. Oh, her yeah. hair is like, <laughs> her hair and the fact that she wears a skirt were 100% decisions made with that in mind. <laughs> That's fun. So that you can just draw them <laughs> mm -hmm. and have fun with, with drawing them. Yeah. It's like whatever direction I need to go in, it can be like the Studio Ghibli logic of like hair poofing in reaction. Just making everything more dynamic. 
Mm-hmm. Or I like it in that if she's like moving somewhere, I can have the hair trailing behind and it like emphasizes the arc of action mm-hmm. and such. When you draw regular characters, like, or characters a lot, do you, do you draw, um, what's called a model sheet? Like, I guess, like, you know, usually animators or, you know, people who, who, um, you know, have a standard character with just, like, you know, proportions of how big the head is, how big the body is side view three quarter view front view like do you do you have model sheets for for your characters at all not really like when i'm first designing someone i might do kind of a vague pass at like what does the nose look like facing forward versus like side view Mm -hmm. but almost everything about the rest of their proportions is sort of learned by doing (laughs) And things tend to, like, the more I tend to draw something, the more I find that I adjust certain approaches or, like, I design it one way, but I start to fall back into an old habit. Mm -hmm. And I kind of have to recognize, like, okay, that's just how I want to draw this. So Mm -hmm. we'll go with that. Yeah, it evolves over time. Like, Mm -hmm. Charlie Brown has evolved over time. Garfield Mm -hmm. has evolved over time. They look very much different from their first iterations. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. But can't... yeah, I don't really have any sort of real traditional model sheets. I tend to only know what they look like when I find myself in a situation where I'm like, oh, I should draw them in a new angle. Mm-hmm. How would that rotate in space? Mm-hmm. And like, there's certain like rules I'll come up with on the fly, like her bangs will always switch sides oh. depending which way she's facing. Oh, really? Okay. Like that was a kind of deliberate choice because I designed her like this and then was like, I don't know how this part would rotate <laughs> without <laughs> suddenly curving over the head weird. Ah. So I'm like, you know what? Cartoon logic. <laughs> That's kind of a uh, Mickey Mouse does that. Mm-hmm. You never see like his ears in the side view. They're always yeah, two they're circles. Always circles, no matter two which circles. way he's facing. Yeah. Doesn't matter. <laughs> but that doesn't make sense, but I guess it works. <laughs> yeah. It's visually appealing. It's easier. Like yeah. it gives you a lot more freedom where you don't have to worry about how this thing changes in 3D space. You can just put them at whatever angle you want and you know exactly how it's going to be drawn. Sure. I'm going to call that a sugar high. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, you got to have those uh, shaky lines. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. What do we got next? Let's see. Let me... Um, how about like begging, like puppy eyes? <laughs> <laughs> this is very out of character for her. So, <laughs> oh, she doesn't. She doesn't beg for anything. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> she always. She just gets what she wants, or she. <laughs> I mean, either she doesn't want it, or she's so invested in the process of getting it that like everyone's too scared to get in her way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ah, so this would be different for her. Yeah. No, her counterpart is the one who'd be much more likely to beg. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Because it's her and a friend who go on, like, the mundanely magical adventures. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) So they were very deliberately designed to be kind of, like, opposites of each other. Right. So... She's the brawn, and uh-huh. he's more of, like, the heart. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to try and keep it at least someone in character. I feel like if she's begging, she really does not like the fact that she is. Uh-huh, uh-huh, okay. <laughs> You're like, it's impossible. She can't. 
be like eye twitching. Yeah. <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> do it just do it <laughs> uh, this is going to be the world's laziest hand <laughs> yeah, get it <laughs> yeah this is how i always I do it. my face sketches of things where it's like my first pass i always give myself permission to just have everything wrong oh yeah and then it's after that where I'm like, okay, let's actually look at what this was supposed to be and <laughs> make it a little better. You're just getting positioning. Mm -hmm. and, you know. Yeah, and like I've said before, I only know how to correct things after I've made the mistake. Uh huh. It's like I can't just draw hands that are like perfectly clasped together. I need to <laughs> do the wrong lines first and then yeah. be like, okay this is the pattern right. it would more or less take. <laughs> right. That's, that's more like it. Yep. <laughs> Still pretty rough, but that's okay. I'm doing these pretty deliberately fast. Uh -huh. It's a little evil there. Like, yeah. <laughs> it looks a little bit like she's scheming, which uh -huh. <laughs> I don't know if she's smart enough to truly scheme. <laughs> like not that she's dumb, but that she doesn't really care sure. to try and like manipulate people into things. Like either she's not invested in something and you clearly know she's not invested or she's very invested in something and you clearly know she's very invested. So she's very much like hard on her sleeve. Mm. <laughs> so that's what makes her fun. <laughs> yeah. She's very honest, but she's also very, very like blunt in her honesty. <laughs> <laughs> begging? begging? Not begging. <laughs> she doesn't beg. <laughs> okay, you ready for the next one? I am. Uh, would she be the type to roll her eyes? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> All right. Let's do that. I hope other people are having fun watching this because I really, <laughs> I've loved drawing her. Yeah, I can tell. The rolling eyes. Usually, yeah, with rolling eyes, the eyes are always at the top, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you always kind of show them like at that absolute oh. highest motion. Like, yeah, I guess you can't roll up. <sighs> you don't roll. Yeah, you don't show the bottom to the top. <laughs> you always just show the top. Yeah. Yeah, if you really wanted to emphasize the action, you could probably do like a whole sequence of like the eye like starting at the bottom, up, mm -hmm. up, up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, just in the mouth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And make the eyebrow a little stronger. Mm. Whenever you, when you do your expressions, do you ever like refer to like, do you use a mirror to like kind of figure out the exact expression you want? Or do you look at like other drawings or, or even photographs? Honestly, not really. My main source of reference for faces, other than just like what I've read and absorbed over the years, tends to be just making the face myself mm -hmm. <laughs> and trying to like imitate the feeling of it. I do use a mirror reference, like just the mirror if I'm doing poses though. Mm. Like, uh, like 
I tend to be a little overly ambitious at times with like, I want this to be at this certain angle. I don't know how to draw that, but I'm going to do it anyway. And then later I'll like go in front of the mirror and like try and imitate it and be like, oh, that's how that looks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Facial expressions specifically tend to be a result of just trying to push my own drawings. So like, I'll do a first pass of like, here's what I think the expression would look like. And then I try and do another pass of like, what way can I, what details can I push to like really emphasize this? Mm. But yeah, it might be in part because honestly, a lot of the artists that I tend to follow and like really admire and study on don't really draw like me <laughs> like a lot of what I follow tend to be people who put a little more emphasis on realism mm. in their art okay so I'm almost always comparing myself to art that I myself do not draw <laughs> mm. <laughs> she's <Yes>. just done <laughs> yep <Yeah. laughs> i think we might be able to squeeze in one more one do you more? have another prompt for me let's see um uh i think oh wait no you let's see how about um furious Ooh. okay a fun one. <laughs> Do you have any sort of techniques uh, when you're approaching like expression work? Um, I think I, I make the face too while I'm drawing. <laughs> um, I don't usually look at a mirror either but you know, but I, yeah, like like you, I think if I need like hand position or something like that, then I'll I'll look in the mirror for that. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I'll ask somebody like, because sometimes you do need an expression, mm -hmm. a subtle expression, and I can't look in the mirror for that because mm -hmm. I might be looking away. It it might be like I'm looking away from the camera, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> from, from mm -hmm. the mirror, mm -hmm. so I can't see the mirror if I'm looking away, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So sometimes I ask other people to model it for me. Okay. Um, if there's someone, you know, available to me <laughs> who is willing. Mm -hmm. um, but generally when I'm making, when I'm drawing, I, I will just make that face like, you know, like if I'm drawing this furious face, I'm just going to look furious while I draw it. Mm-hmm. That's how I tend to do it. And it probably looks really silly. <laughs> and yet for some reason it does help. <laughs> it does. I'd love to see like a proper scientific study on like why. Right? Yeah. It's like I've heard a really good description of um animating specifically, but I think it applies to cartooning as well as being a form of acting. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Which I suppose could be like something that kind of connects mm -hmm. with why, like, when you act out the emotion, you can better sort of recreate it in what you're drawing. Mm -hmm. I know. I know. I just generally make faces all the time yeah <laughs> I used to be called the face maker <laughs> like <laughs> I just make weird faces all the time like unknowingly I do mm. um which is embarrassing <laughs> but, <laughs> um yeah so I, I'm just constantly making faces even when I watch our, our past videos I'm making weird faces <laughs> sometimes <laughs> I'm like, oh, well. <laughs> it's okay. To be fair, I don't even notice because half the time I'm not looking at the camera. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> yeah, you can do that. All right, I'm going to 
try and finish this up in oh yeah less than a minute all right <laughs> <laughs> i think it's just about at the point where that's pretty readable as being furious oh, oh yeah <laughs> she looks pretty furious yes <laughs> Uh, eh, no, that's fine without the shading. Furious. Grr. All right. <laughs> well, that was super fun. That was fun. <laughs> it's a good exercise for me, too, because, like I mentioned, I deliberately chose like my own already made characters because. We'll kind of explore this a little next week as well. When you have different characters that you're writing, even if they're making the same general expression and like gesture, it can come, there's different ways to portray it to sort of stay true to their own character. So I hope everyone watching had fun. <laughs> I know I did. I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen though, because we are at the end of the half hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, those always fly by. I know they do, right? <laughs> Though I'm impressed how many drawings I managed to fit into that. I was worried I wouldn't get that many. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> yeah. All right. So yeah, so we are the last program that is lined up for today, but we have a bunch of stuff happening tomorrow. We have a whole bunch of story times. We have Open Labs with Ricardo and Debbie and I will be back with another art prog program tomorrow at two o'clock. So I hope you're able to join us then. And otherwise, you can always keep up with us at our website at smcl.org. That's the best place for all the easy links and for all the info on the cool stuff that we're doing. So hope you have a good rest of your day and hope to see you tomorrow. Bye, everybody.